Hi and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to share with you my pavilion tent and this is actually more of a concept than it is a full step-by-step -step tutorial video. I'm going to show you how I went about making this so that you can create your own customized tent for yourself. The cool thing is, is this is going to give you options in terms of color, in terms of height, and a little bit of style as well. Any questions, please feel free to ask me down below. I will do my best to answer them for you. If you'd rather reach out to me privately, you can reach me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. So for now, sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you later. Bye. For a full list of supplies, make sure to check the description below. The first thing you're going to want to have on hand is a gallon milk jug, which you have washed out thoroughly before putting to use. Trust me on this one. Once your jug is clean and dry, what you're going to do is mark off the lines as you see here pictured. Now, if you want your tent to be lower or higher, you are obviously going to adjust the height on the sides here. Once you get the height and measurements that you want for your overall height, you're then going to carefully cut out around your lines. You might need to go back and even things out a little bit here and there, which is fine, but you want your end result to look something like these photos as you can see them here. And you're going to also cut out a little opening for the door on the same section where the handle used to be. So this is going to create the base for your pavilion tent. To create the peak, you're first going to want to make sure you have on hand some strong bamboo skewers. What I did for this particular tent is I shoved a skewer through each area where there's this sort of corner shape that was in the milk jug. However, hindsight, if you want to, you can actually add more of these skewers than what I have pictured, and you'll have more supports through the way for the peak of your tent when you're done. So this is something where you can take some freedom here and put in as many of these support bits as you want. Just remember that the more of these you have, the less draping you will have in the long run. So if you want a more taut top to your tent, then by all means, add in more of these skewers. Once you get the count in that you want, what you want to do is just take a sandwich tie and find your natural peak for these and tie it together. When you see where they're landing together with each other, what I then did is take a strong set of nippers and cut everything down to where that natural peak was formed, where the twist tie is. What you then want to do using a hot glue gun is to take your first three skewers and start creating the front of your peaked area. Now keep those nippers on hand because you're going to find as you're gluing these around to each other, one length is probably going to be a little bit longer than you need it to be. So it's basically a balancing act. You're going to start with these first three and then work from your right side and then go back over to its partner on the left hand side and continue gluing around with your hot glue gun until you have your pointed peak as shown here. When the peak is ready to go, what you then want to do is reinforce where you have put the skewers through the milk jug on the interior part of what's going to be your tent and just put some beads of hot glue around each skewer to keep them in place. The other thing I did for reinforcement is at the very top of the peak, I made sure to put a thick bead underneath the peak itself to make sure that all those points where the bamboo skewers have been glued together have a solid point underneath them. And then I also took those thicker tongue depressor style popsicle sticks and measured them out to the side lengths that I needed and put them around the base of the milk jug so it had more strength to it and was a little bit more firm because otherwise it's just that flimsy milk jug plastic that you're going to be depending on. So this gets your milk jug prepped to act as the base for your tent. To give the milk jug the look of tent fabric, what I ended up using were the Puffs brand tissues. It's the double ply, but what you're going to do is peel it apart so you have basically one ply each. And this is what's going to act as the fabric texture on the milk jug. The other thing you're going to want for this part of the process is Mod Podge mixed with equal parts water. So you create a very thin mixture, almost like whole milk. Now, yes, you could technically put the Mod Podge onto the tent and then put the tissue onto the Mod Podge and spray it down with a spray bottle, but this is why I don't recommend doing it. You're not going to be able to manipulate the tissue as you want to, so you can get the folds in the fabric that you want and the overall effect. Once you put that tissue onto the Mod Podge, it's going to start ripping faster and it's not going to shape as easily. So what I prefer to do is this dry approach, essentially, where you place the dry tissue onto the dry jug and then you take your wet mixture of Mod Podge and water and using a paintbrush, you manipulate the tissue into place to get the folds and the looks of the fabric that you want to have for your tent. 
To start working this process onto the milk jug, you first want to put a bead of hot glue around the front area where the door is. Then folding over one of those pieces of tissue, you're going to put the folded area along the top part where you've just put that hot glue and press it against each other so that basically you're adhering the top part of the tissue to the milk jug. And this will keep the tissue from shifting around too much on you as you're starting to work on the mixture. Taking your paintbrush, what you're going to do, working from the top of where the tissue has been hot glued down towards the bottom, you're going to start saturating this tissue with your mixture. And as you do it, what you can do is nudge the tissue into folds, into drapes, into collections to make it look more like a piece of fabric draping down as opposed to just a piece of tissue put on top of your milk jug. When you get to the bottom edge of your milk jug, what you're then gonna do is turn the milk jug over and still using that Mod Podge mix, you're going to paint it so that the tissue folds over and will stick to the place where you've put your popsicle sticks for reinforcement. And that's how you start getting the first layer of tissue around the bottom part of your milk jug. Let this dry completely before we move on to the next step. While you're letting that first layer of tissue dry around the jug section of your tent, what you can do is start making the edging detail for where the tent pieces of fabric overlap onto different layers. And to do that, you're going to use popsicle sticks. And as you can see here, I have the cutout bits. You can see all those nicely rounded edges that are gonna add that detail. To make it easier on you, you really wanna take two popsicle sticks and make one so that it has one side nipped off to make it easier for measuring out every other popsicle stick. And then you're going to have another one with both sides nipped off, again, to make it easier to get the other side nipped off and have your pieces all about the same length. Once everything has dried, what you can then start doing is first cutting open the flaps to the front area of the tent where the door is. Then what you can do is take those rounded bits of popsicle sticks and start gluing them around the opening area of your tent zone. And you wanna start first in the front and then working one side, then the next side, start adding on these popsicle stick bits to the edge where the milk jug opening is. Now that you have those popsicle pieces glued around the entryway zone of your tent, you're going to do the same concept as you've done before with the layers of tissue. First hot gluing it to the upper edge of the jug and then bringing it down and over where that opening is and you're actually going to cover that gap with just the tissue and layer it over the popsicle sticks. When you get to this popsicle sticks what you want to do is take your brush and you're going to work that mixture into the crevices and start tucking the tissue up and against it as tight as you possibly can to give you a division between the upper layer and the bottom layer of this zone of your milk jug. And you can go back and sort of fiddle a little bit here and there, but your overall goal is to make sure that you have these pieces of popsicle stick standing out a little bit more to start creating that edge detail that you'll see on pavilion tents. The other thing you can start doing at this point is trimming away excess zones of tissue that you don't need to have put onto the jug. And you will find on the edges of this particular section, it's easier to trim away the tissue where you don't need it overlapping to where the already dry tissue exists. So just keep in mind, you can cut away pieces of tissue so you don't have as much bulk in certain areas. If you want to help accelerate the drying time of these certain sections, you can take a hair dryer on a low heat setting or put this up near a place where there is a stronger breeze or heat like a heat vent in your house. But you're going to do the same thing to the top part of the milk jug. You're going to take those popsicle bits and put them around the entire edge to start getting the detail going for the top part of your peak. Then you're going to start taking more tissue and at the very top, put a little dab of hot glue to hold your tissue in place and work it down the areas of the peak of the tent. Now, if you want this to have a more taut look to it than what I have going, you can actually go so far as to cut out triangle sections of tissue and work each individual section between your two skewer posts. You do want to make sure though that you have overlap happening. What I did instead was take, take a larger piece of tissue and just drape it over and start putting it into place using the paintbrush and the Mod Podge mix. It's your choice here in terms of how much draping you want to have, how taut you want it to look, play around with this and get the look that you want it to have. Worst case scenario, you just take the tissue off and start again. So don't be afraid to play around with the peak part if you want it to have more of a sack or if you want it to be more of a taut type of an appearance. While I have the specific colors I used listed in the description, I wanted to explain this in a way so that you could have the freedom to change the colors for your tent in the long run. 
For your base coat colors of choice, you want to make sure that anything that is done where there is just pure tissue has two parts of the paint to one part of Mod Podge mixed together just to give that tissue a little bit of extra strength. Anything that's up against the milk jug, you can just use straight paint. Also keep in mind, if you use a true black on any part of this, it will take a lot of layers to bring up the colors. So I would recommend going no darker than this dark brown that I am showing you here in the photos. What I did for the second layer is I took a cream color and went around the base area of the tent, basically where the milk jug plastic is, and I painted it up with that cream tone. I did find I had to do a couple layers of this paint just to make sure I got into all the nooks and crannies and had it a nice color. Coverage. The nice thing about the brand is it gave it a nice warmth underneath the cream tone. In terms of the other areas, what I did is basically just went through and did another dry brushing technique to bring out the folds and the texture of the fabric on the peak of the tent as well as the edging areas. So you're going to let that dry completely and then we're going to move on to washes. The specific washes I did are also in the description. Just keep in mind when it comes to washing your tent, you need to be aware of the colors that you decided to put next to each other. In my case, since I had the blue and the green and their similar tones, I was able to do a full wash of the same color around those sections. However, should I have done a yellow and a blue next to each other, you want to make sure that the wash for your yellow is something more of like a deeper orange than it would be a darker blue in your blue section. So with your washes, don't be too heavy handed and make sure you're aware of your colors before putting a wash on top of it. The other thing is that for your canvas area, if, as long as you've kept it to a warmer, creamier tone, you can do the same wash all the way around. And if it does get into those other sections of colors, it doesn't show up as much. You just want to be more aware of your color selection for the top areas or where you've used different colors. For the sake of giving this tent some different rolls, I added a little bead to the top peak area of the tent to act as a holder for different flags. So really just find a little round bead. You can double check and make sure that it is a wide enough opening to hold a toothpick and hot glue that bead to the peak of your tent. Then just paint the bead with a darker color so you don't have this bright shiny silver bead on the top of your tent. To create a flag for the tent, all I did was basically find an image put it into a document where I could print out two of these images, scale down to the proper size, and then what you do is take some scotch tape and put it over the two images. I did find that I needed my images to be closer, so I just cut it apart and pieced them back together and put more scotch tape across it. Fold it over, have a toothpick ready, take some glue stick, put some glue stick on the inside of your flag, and then you're going to attach it over your toothpick, let it dry. I gave it a fun little cut just to give it some interest. You can even fold the flag up on itself a little bit so it looks like it's flowing in the wind. And now you have flags that you can interchangeably move around on the tent. You can have various styles and various purposes for it. So it may be a boss tent one session and then a gypsy teller's tent the next session. It just gives you some modularity by simply switching out a flag. And here is the final look of this particular tent that I made using just a simple milk jug and some other bits and pieces from around the house. Again, I've left the painting a little bit more open to you because tents like this tend to have different color combinations and you can make it your own doing that that way. Just keep the tips in mind that I gave you in terms of the color selection and the washes and everything like that. If you have any questions, as always, please reach out to me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. I am more than happy to help you out if you have any questions after watching this. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and come on over and check out the page on Facebook and join my group and share your creations with us. Always love having new people joining us there. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day. We're taking an inhaler and get nervous energy going. <gasps> hi and welcome back. Yeah, hi, Mr. Sheffield. Ah, oh. I'm so nasally today. Hi, hi, oh my god. Allergies and recording. Ooh, fun. And I'll see you later. Bye. I don't think so. Ooh. <laughs> And if you want to stick around, if you want to stick around, how do you stick around? <laughs> stick around, kids! Oh my god. Oh, she's having issues. 
that may have freaking potential. It's got potential. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs>